stream over. All right. I think I think that's good. Um, so I hope everybody's weekend has been good and uh, is looking forward to the new week. Uh, I am definitely looking forward to this sort of last week of um, learning the deep learning before learning the deep learning. It's a very interesting way of putting it. Um, learning learning enough about deep learning so that I can apply it to making the uh, the pong game. Uh, I have three weeks left. Um, if you count this week um, and the fact that my uh, the conference talk is on Friday, so it's in not this Friday, not next Friday, but the next Friday. Um, hello, Miguel. Good morning. So today we're going to continue on with the uh, uh, learning, deep learning, and uh, I've reached the first project in a book. And I think, you know, I, uh, I, my mic is a bit low. Ooh, that's not good. Let me fix that. All right. Ooh, how about this? I think. I think this might be a little bit better. I'm trying to make not peek into the red. Um, all right, so the biggest um, the the project I think what will what will teach us by doing this is learning how to make a, a network like learn across multiple inputs. Uh, something that was slightly upsetting in the book is that it it dropped us into this project and said, "Okay, now go do this," uh, but it hadn't really talked yet about how to learn from multiple inputs. Uh, so far, it's uh, just been talking about, "Hey, here's here's multiple inputs. Take the first like you know set of them and then learn it. There you go. You're you're good to go now." And I felt. I felt a little bit upset about that because now it's saying we'll use this uh, use this data this n n miss data, which are um, all these digits that have been hand drawn and then put into a, an array of uh, essentially black and white, so one through two fifty five, um, to then predict the number properly. And I guess like my thought was, well, am I only predicting like one number? Am I just practicing building a neural network or do you want me to actually try to learn the full entire thing? Uh, so eventually I read a little bit further and like, I don't know, five pages later in the next chapter, it talks about uh, how to properly um, predict an entire data set. And it does admit, hey, we uh, we haven't really showed you this. So I think actually, yes, they're they're expecting me just to practice with matrix math, not actually build a real ne neural network that act, you know learns across an entire data set, uh, which I don't want to do. So let me see where this is. Uh, that there's there's an entire there's a micro section in here. Well, these are still there's a street light problem that it has us do, and then ah uh, yes, learning the entire data set. So it talks about there's these three different ways that the book the book kind of sort of teaches um, stochastic gradient descent. So we've been doing gradient descent, but only on one data input. So according to this, stochastic gradient descent is looping through each input set, doing one, uh, one pass at it, so one prediction, and then moving on to the next. So that would be sort of like predicting, like you know, doing, doing the weight adjustment for a zero, and then moving on to the one, two, and then going through all of these, and then looping back to the beginning again, until the error margin is extremely low, or we reached our, our cap. Full gradient descent, it doesn't really, it, it, so it says it, um, it introduced this in chapter four, which I don't agree with, uh, because I don't remember seeing anything about this, which is averaging each of the inputs, so averaging all the zeros, 
and then I guess doing a full a full weight adjustment and then averaging all the ones, doing a full weight adjustment and then then so on until the end of the nines and then then we'd be done. I I don't have confirmation that that's actually what it means. So uh, if if any of you if that is correct, if if my that assumption is actually correct, let me know. Um, I would actually want you know like like to know that. And of course, there's batch gradient descent, which is a hybrid of both, where we might like just average these four, and then after that's done, we might go through and do all these, and then do the rest of them. So that's that's as far as I can tell the three different ways. I'm thinking of the stochastic gradient descent would be the way I would want to do it for the game. Which means that's what I'm going to try to do with this data set here. So what, what do we have access to? First of all, I'm going to npm install and mist. mnist. I feel that it's easy for me to to get that backwards. And I want to play around with this data set so we can, you know, eventually get it going. What do we need for this? So we're going to require it and we're going to set with numbers, so a training set and a test set. Oh, and then we have, then we're going to have arrays. So each one will be an array of objects. Okay, so we'll do n m nist. Um, all right, so we're going to have um, training images equals, oh wait, no, it's mnist set first. And they were suggesting like uh, 8,000, 2,000. Nod. That's what I wanted. Cannot read property zero of undefined. Okay, so that was not what I wanted to do. Let's see. Let's see how. Set dot training. Oh. Okay, so I needed to do. Uh, images. Let's see. Const um, image set equals. And then this would be image set. Okay, that's still not right. Um, Katali, good morning. You're gonna go have lunch. See you in a moment. Awesome, yeah. All right. What what did I do wrong here? So we brought in mnist. We get our set, mnist. Whoa, where did I get to local string? It 
There we go. Okay, so the first, the first item, so it's this object, we have input as a key, and that's gonna be an array, and that's gonna be, that's gonna be the number. And then output, so is this starting with zero? I think it is. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So this number is a five. So the idea is that I will have each of these items in the input will be my, my input. Uh, and there should be 700 something of them. Uh, dot image dot length. input dot length seven hundred eighty four inputs uh, and ten outputs so that's gonna be a very interesting interesting set there but it looks like I can definitely use this uh, because the data structure is just gonna be an array of these objects so I'll I'll loop through each of the images, grab the first input, grab the first expected output, and then go into the training data from there. I think, I think that'll work. I'm gonna go back so I can reference the, uh, the general algorithm that I'm using. Since we've done a lot of the, uh, the hard work in the previous days of creating these functions, hopefully this won't take too long for us to, uh, for us to actually get going. Um, let's see. I'll connect that and we'll get, uh, we'll get started with this. So input and Training images of zero dot, I think it's output. Yeah, it is. Okay, so I've, I've got that. And then the test images, I believe are the same. Oh no. Okay. Can't read property zero if undefined. So no, it's, did I get it wrong? Is it not testing? It's test, that's why. Okay, yeah, so besides that, it's the exact same. So these are going to be 8,000 random images, 2,000 random images. I can use the test images to determine how accurate my bot is as it's learning. Okay, so what do we, what do we need here? Um, we first, uh, we need to generate our weights. I'm thinking to begin with, since we have no idea what our weights should be, I'm thinking just a the matrix, like defining the matrix and making it all zeros, and then just having the weights be zeros. Um, I don't really know if that's the best, like and that's a good way to do it, but I don't. I have no idea how to like guess the proper weights either. So I'm thinking of just starting with zero, uh, which means so. The input 
is along the top and the output is down. So the, the width is input. So let me open up the deep learning functions here. We have this create matrix. It looks like it's not initiating with them with zeros. It looks like it's just initiating them like an empty matrix. Which I, I guess is nice. I could um I could then loop through uh each one and then in it, initiate it myself. So that, that could potentially work. So let's go into those tests. Oh wait, I already have a uh, describe for it. Yeah, right now they're all gonna be undefined. So I need to set them all to zeros. Uh, so should create a, zero, a matrix um, with a default of Should create a matrix with with values set to zero. Uh, let's do maybe. Well, this five three. I think this was fine here. And then all these undefined should be zero. I'm going to call this create zeros matrix. Of course, it doesn't exist, so it's going to be a little bit upset, but we can fix that. All right, so our first, our first step here would be to create the actual just empty matrix. So I think that we can just use uh, const um, our matrix is going to be equal to create matrix, and we'll pass it in the width and the height. Once we have that, I want to now essentially loop through and replace all the undefines with zeros. So we're going to loop through down. Um, and I can just do this in, should I do this in place? Or I, right, there is a way. I can map through the matrix. And then for each one, I map through the inside one. And that, that should be fine. So we're going to turn matrix dot map. So that's going to be going through all of the the rows, the height. Uh, and so we're going to get a, uh, a column and I want to then take this column and map through it. And then we're going to get an actual, like the, uh, the item, the value. And I want to just return a zero, regardless of what that value is. I think, I think that'll do it.
All right, and it's passing. So that's uh, that's perfect there. So now we need to create our weights. So const our initial weights are going to be uh, what is it? Create. So we need to pull this in. zeros matrix kind of sad that it didn't autocomplete that oh right because of misspelled const all right well so we know that the the width is going to be the number of inputs so that's the uh, that's the training images the first one dot input dot length and then the output the height is going to be the number of outputs so that's going to be training images of zero dot output dot length which I think is just 10 all right so that gives us our weights uh, we also need our inputs well our inputs are gonna so we're gonna start with just this one maybe what I should do is just run through the first several so what is this gonna be um, we have all these as inputs so let's do a for loop uh, let uh, count equals zero, count is less than, we could do five to make sure we're, we're moving towards the right direction here. Uh, count equals count plus one. Um, if you're curious about the underscore for this one, it's uh, I picked this up from Rust. Uh, it's it's the idea that I'm not really I'm not going to be using this variable uh, outside of this. So I'm just using it to do a, a simple for loop of five times, um, and that that's pretty much all it's ever going to be used for. Uh, okay, so we have our weights. We need our our inputs. Um, yeah, we need our inputs. So we're going to grab the first input. So uh, I can call this current input. Oh, and you know what? I should loop through the test images to grab this current input, which means that our Train images. Okay, so I need to loop through in so inside of here for for each of these counts, I'm gonna loop through and grab. So I think I think I actually just want this to be one. I want to loop through this. This is gonna be the number of iterations fully to do, we need another loop in here. So we're going to have, um, so that's the like overall count of how often we're going through the entire training set. But then I need to train each image I guess I'm I'm confusing myself here I want to um, 
I need to write this down, but I don't have a whiteboard to use. And I lost my cable for the Wacom tablet, so I, I need to wait until I get a new one of those. So we're gonna have our, our matrix. Let's go into here and we can look at, look at it. We have our inputs. Our inputs are essentially these. We're gonna go through these one at a time. So we're gonna grab one, one set of the inputs, one set of the, we have the weights, and one set of the outputs, expected outputs. And then we're gonna train one time on it, and then we're gonna to move to this one and do, do this over again. We're gonna go through that until the end of the data set and then we're gonna to check to see how well we've done. And if we've done well, we wanna repeat this entire process with like, okay, grab this one, then, then grab this one. And so we need one loop to go over this entire thing. I'm like, okay, grab the first one, grab the second one. I don't know if I need a second, second loop. I'll, I'll find out really quickly if I do. All right, so we'll do const current input. I guess I'll just call this current um, current training image. Oh, right, because I want to do this three times total. to see if I'm, I'm moving closer. Uh, I guess right now I'll just do this for three. We're gonna grab the training image. So this is gonna be an index. Uh, so this is gonna be training images. I guess this, training image? Yeah, this is gonna be the training images index. Okay, so now we have the current training image index, but it's not really the the input, is it? Um, this is gonna be dot input will give us the training image. Now we also have, we have our weights, we need the, the actual like the expected output. So current training image, um, uh, correct output. And that's going to be the training images, training image index dot output. So this should be array of 780 something or, or whatever, and this is an array of 10. So we have our, our input, we have our output, we have our weights. Uh, we'll need our alpha too, so we can set that here. I have no idea what that should be, so I will set this to 0 0.01. And then we can begin working on our prediction. So we'll get uh, calculate prediction. Um, once we have the prediction, what we need to do with it, we need to calculate our error and our deltas. So um, calculate errors, calculate deltas. Then with the delta, so the errors will be used to determine how how good we're how good we're doing, which means we need to keep track of the previous error to see if we're, we're actually like doing better. Um, although I'm wondering if I can use the test images instead of the errors, or if I need both. 
Okay, so I have the prediction of the errors, the deltas. I need to now get the weighted deltas. Okay. Which is just um, taking the deltas and multiplying it or scaling it by the input. That will create a matrix. And then we can have uh, update weights. But that's not going to be all. That's just the, the, the neural network part. We also need to know if we're, how close we are to being done. So we need to check the previous error. So is uh, errors going up or down? Um, I, don't, I guess I don't know if, if errors would be going up or down or if it would just be sort of staying the same. Has errors plateaued? Ooh, Urgh. I don't know how to spell plateaued. Um, I guess I could ask, I could ask Google and see if, let me do that. Let me see how, if they could figure out what I want to do. Okay, so it's has errors flat toad. Um, my initial thought is correct. You only use test image when you want to finally evaluate your model. Learning only is done using training set and thus training error. Okay, so there, there was one thing which uh, I, I hadn't like fully read, but it did have it in the next section, which I think what is it called? Oh, it's in chapter. It's in chapter eight, I think. In chapter eight, it talk it uses data and says that it was able to get around seventy percent using this method, and then it was able to uh, fix that to eighty something percent uh, with a uh, with a slight. Uh, with slight difference, let me see. Overfitting, that's what it called it, overfitting. And what it was suggesting was that you could, you could at the end of each round of training, you could also test your, uh, run the test images over the network to see if you're getting better or worse. And if we're getting worse now, then let's not update the weights anymore. We've, we've plateaued with, with that. Um, but okay, so has errors plateaued? So is, is the errors getting like smaller? Um, but I mean, I guess that would be something in the real world to definitely worry about. I don't know if I need to care that much about this here and now. Um, has the errors uh, plateaued and then I guess like theoretically, um, how, how good are we with the test images? Should we keep going? I think I think this is going to be the general the general logic for it, which of course is is easy to say this because this is where all of the the hard math comes from. But all right, um, let's I guess let's begin. So calculate prediction. We can create a uh, a function here. I'll create them all down here. Uh, 
we're going to bring the inputs and the weights in. And if I remember correctly, we're going to loop through each of the weights and do a dot product between the inputs and the weights to create the, uh, the 10 um, predictive outputs. So uh, what is that? We need to map through the 10 down. So we're going to return weights.map. And then we'll have a single weight. And now we want to uh, dot product the inputs and the weights. Do I have that? Or is it weighted some? Okay, so I called it dot. Then we're going to dot between the weight and the inputs. I don't think it matters which order I put this in. Um, our input is going to be the current training image. And the weights are just going to be the weights. Um, also, Miguel, if I'm if I'm wrong about that assumption, let me know, because uh, I I could just like not worry about overcorrecting, overfitting right now, and just check if our errors are getting smaller. Um, okay, so that's our that's our initial set of predictions. I guess we could console log this to make sure it's what we think it is. Oh, I have this other, I was like, where is that? Why is that image displaying? All right, one, two, three. This is not 10 output. <laughs> this is not 10. Um, that is, that's not where I want to be then. Uh, why JavaScript? That's what I'm going to be using for the conference talk. Um, most people are are uh, familiar with JavaScript, so I figure that's going to be easiest to. I'm probably for the game itself going to use P5.js, and uh, that will just work really easily with that too. For now, you just focus on getting the errors lower. Okay, that's probably a good idea. Um, Am I running into this problem? Well, okay. First of all, I shouldn't have only three three of these. Um, what happened? Why am I getting a dot between weights and inputs? This should be the same. It shouldn't matter if I have it the other way around, right? Oh, that's fun. When I switch that around, I get not a number. Let's debug. Wait, why? Hold on. What did I do? I like canceled my debug by accident. I want to debug the MNIST training. I think I, I launched the wrong debug. Uh, 
add configuration, launch program, not multiple input. This is going to be MNIST training. Whoa. Okay, this is much better. So we have our inputs here. It's a 784 length array. If I take a look through it, here, here are them all. And our weights is 10 down with 784 wide. So that's also correct. Each of them Length 784, I'm not seeing this with zeros. Or is that with that array zero? Is that what it's trying to, no, this is an array of nothing, is it? Well, let's see what happens if I console log weights of zero. Seven hundred eighty-four empty items. Did I not? Okay, so create zeros matrix. Why are you not input length input width? So the size of the matrix is correct. Unfortunately, the uh, what it's doing is not. I thought for certain that this would map it through and make it make it have zeros. Didn't, didn't the test actually work properly? Create the zeros matrix, pass it the width and height, and have the expected, oh, deep equal. Yeah, okay. So because I didn't deep equal it, this is not deep equal either. One fail, okay. So it was failing and I thought my test was passing and that's because I was using the assert incorrectly. So this this uh, clever cleverness that I tried actually didn't work the way we expected it to. So we're taking that column and we're mapping through it and returning a new array uh, that's sort of replacing this, but it's it's not this is not returning zero, which I'm I'm a little bit sad about. So what if I did this in in place? Um, I don't know if I want, how am I doing the create matrix normal? I'm just doing that with the, the new array to create the new array. Okay, so we have the initial undefined matrix and now we need to, I guess, create the new one. It's, it's kind of, zeroed matrix equals, I guess I can um, set this to an empty array here. And then for each of the lines, Katali, hello, how is lunch? 
Um, not Python. I've actually been um, I've actually been doing Python from uh, off stream to sort of like do my first pass through learning this. Uh, and I haven't finished this. Uh, I went sort of part way through this um, this exercise, and then I'm. Uh, I'm uh, now doing this in JavaScript. And of course, sometime later, I really want to do this in Rust. A Python stream. Is Python your main language or your the language you like the most? Uh, okay, so zeroed matrix. We have to loop through each one. Okay, so for each row in matrix, we have to just convert that and then place it into here. And I guess we could just do a, uh, a for loop. So for let um, count, I could just do this. Count equals zero, underscore count is less than this is going to be the height of the matrix. That's what I tried, and it didn't work. Um, it was it was not doing it correctly. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you what I was doing. Because I don't remember if you saw what I had there before. Let me just undo until I have it. Create zeros matrix. So this is this is what I was attempting to do. So return matrix dot map. So map to this matrix, which is you know got x wide and x deep. We're gonna get each column. Um, actually, this would be a row, wouldn't it? This is gonna be a row, and we're gonna map through that. So we're gonna return then each rows map, and set the value of each item to zero. So this was what I was attempting to do as a sort of a, a tricky, clever one-liner. And uh, it's not working because we're just getting empty arrays as opposed to arrays with zeros. So that's that's a problem we need to, to solve here. Um, and I guess I can... zeros matrix create zeros matrix set this up all right so here's this new array it's got it's got empty stuff we haven't gone into the row yet so let's dive in. Here's our row. It's an empty, right, it's the first, so it's the first um, array that's 784, 784 wide. We're going to map through this. Just row that map zero. Wait, does that work if I don't have? Just row map zero like that. That's crazy. I'm used to needing to tell it that's an arrow function. Let's uh, let's try it with the test data. Zero is not a function. Uh, I guess I could just do like underscore. Zero. Same problem. It's it's not returning zero. Uh, let me see if this is return zero. Uh, 
MDN tells you you can do it like that? Huh. Well, it's definitely definitely did not like me doing that. Let's go let's go find that out. MDN array map. Oh, in the Spanish version? Okay, what's, all right. The Spanish version shouldn't be any different, right? It should just be exactly the same except translated. Uh, how far down was it? For our numbers, one, four, nine. Okay, so. Oh, is that the example that it had? So var roots numbers dot map, and then okay, so then it has its function here. Interesting. So they have a they have very different um, example than you do. Yeah, that sounds that sounds like uh, uh, MDN is wrong in that case. Um, which doesn't necessarily help us. What I don't understand is why why this doesn't seem to be working. So I want to try I want to try playing with this a little bit. Um, what is it called? It's uh, REPL it. Where is, why aren't these in alphabetical order? Okay, so if we have const, if I have an array and I have null, 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 and I have const new my array, new array equals array.map, we're going to take the item and we're going to turn zero. Okay, this gives me exactly what I want. Uh, so let's update this to be a matrix. No. No, no. Okay, so our new our new matrix, our new array of arrays, is gonna grab this. We're gonna have each. Uh, so this is gonna be an another array here. So um, embedded array. Uh, embedded array dot map. So then we're going to have our item zero. Okay, look at that. We're setting all these to, to zero. So this is this is the logic we want to use. So instead of array, this is now matrix dot map. This is going to be the uh, the row, and this is going to be 
just something we don't really care about. Why you do this to me, Node? Okay. We're on version 12.1. 12, 12 Let's open up an interactive node shell here and try, try this again. So uh, const, I'll just do a let for this. That shouldn't, it should, you know, like we need the fat arrow. So that, that shouldn't really matter. Um, I find it hilarious that I'm getting stuck on this when I could just multi uh, for loop this and and just be done with it. Um, but now I'm now I'm like upset at node that it's not following like something in its engine is different. And I wonder if this is like a bug of some kind. Uh, okay, so if I have an array, no, no, no. Uh, let new array equals. Actually, I could probably just do this in line. It will tell me right away. So array dot map. We're gonna have the item, and we're gonna turn it zero. Okay, so that works. No, no, no. So here's our here's our matrix. So we're going to do this again. We're going to do the array dot map, and that's going to give us a row. And we're going to row dot map, and that's going to give us each item. And we're going to return zero. Okay, so what am I? What am I doing differently? I guess I didn't set them. I claim that these are null. I mean, the only other difference is that it's undefined. Um, I can't imagine that's a big difference. You might be right. It might be a problem with the matrix creation. All right, so it's uh, my matrix creation. That's probably what the problem is then. Okay, so zeros, uh, create zeros matrix. Um, is using create matrix. So in in here, ah, I'll just um, all right. Let's let's just uh, do this really simple here. Uh, so const uh, create matrix require. Uh, what is this? Deep learning functions. Uh, we're going to const matrix equals create matrix with, uh, let's just do like a three by five. And console.log matrix. And node. So this tells me that it's three empty items. I would really love if it actually showed me that.
let's pull this test.js. So matrix of zero. So the first, the first row. Three empty items. So then the first item of the first row is undefined. Okay. So what if I uh, const um, first row equals matrix of zero const zeroed first row equals the first row dot map. We're going to take the item and we're going to turn it zero. No, I, it doesn't like that. What if I, what if I just manually set this? So first row of zero equals zero. Wait, so I can't map through this. It, that's what I'm getting from that. All right, so what am I doing? Um, with create matrix, I'm being a little bit, uh, we're doing a, a new array here and, and setting the number of undefined items in, in this new array. And it looks like this is incorrect for us. I want the constructor for array. Okay, so I can have new array and then the, the elements that I want to put into it, or new array and the array length. But apparently map, it's unable to map through anything that has new array, array length. Note, this implies an array of array length, empty slots not slots with actual undefined values. <laughs> okay, so that's the problem. I thought it was actually giving me uh, an act a real array, but it's not. This is this is not a really a it's setting it's setting the memory essentially that I'm gonna be using for it. It's not really creating the array. So uh, as, as nice as this was to try to do it this way, I think what I need to do is another for loop for the width and then push in. So we're going to have uh, const, um, this is going to be the row. And then for uh, row count, row count is less than height, no, width. Uh, we're going to row dot 
push, uh, I guess, an undefined, because th that's what this is expecting. And then we're going to matrix.push the row after that, and then return that. All right, let's 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 try our test now. Now everything is passing. So I, I could I can't rely upon the, the, the trick, which is in in um, Python I can just do I hey I want an array, it has zeros in it, and multiply it by like 13, and they got 13 items. Not cool here. Um, yeah, that, that was that was tricky. So this this does work. Uh, it just only works if I have an actual array, not a kind of sort of array. So that that was kind of annoying. <laughs> All right, where where was I? Uh, we kind of screwed ourselves over here for a little bit. Um, we don't need to look at that anymore. So here's our prediction. We want to console log our prediction to make sure that we're still that we're like getting close to where we want to be. Our function neural network. We're going to return the weights. Um, this first time, I believe, is going to be all zeros because the weights are zero. So that's going to return that. All right. I'm still one, two, three. I'm still only getting three. I should be getting 10. I'm getting three because of this for loop. Oh, it's not 10. Okay, never mind. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, that's okay. So I am, I am correct here. <laughs> this is prediction one. This is prediction two, and this is prediction three. Uh, they're all zeros for right now, but that's fine. So we have our prediction. Now we need to calculate our errors. I think we had an error calculate uh, problem function here. Do we also have, the outline, that's what I'm looking for. Not the tests, you. Okay, so now I can look at this. Okay, so here's our calculate errors. It takes in vector one and vector two, uh, and it does have subtract. You know, I kind of want to rename these because it's vector subtract with vector one and vector two. So this is our um, our prediction, and this is our expected results. So now that I have that const errors equals calculate errors are predictions. So prediction, I kind of want to also call this predictions. Uh, and our expected results. So we need we need to grab that in this for loop too. Um, so what is that? That's going to be our current training image. Output. That's this is what it is. The current training image output. Okay, so this gives us the potential errors that we're gonna get. This should be a full one. So 
uh, one times one is just one. So yeah, it should be a positive one no matter what. But we can also log this. Yeah, so we can see where where it missed in these in these predictions. Then we want to calculate our deltas, and I think I have that also in here. Or that's actually just vector or subtract. So we need to grab vector or subtract. I don't have a deltas, right? No. Vector subtract is going to be very much the similar thing. We're going to take the predictions and also the current training uh, correct output. And so this will give us like a positive one or a negative one, depending upon which which where we're going with it. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Calculate weighted deltas. I have this function somewhere. It's the, the product, right? The outer product here. And so we have our vector one and a vector two. And we're gonna create a new matrix with vector one dot length. Uh, and so that tells me that the vector one is the, um, the inputs essentially. So that means to be the equivalent of the inputs and the vector two is the equivalent of the the outputs, right? Width, height. So that's that's our inputs. That's our outputs. And I'm doing this with the uh, weighted deltas versus the Interesting, I don't know if this is gonna create us the proper, the proper size here. Cause the vector is not, is just 10 long, but I need it to be like 784 long. So I have deltas, which is, yeah, okay. So, Current problem, and we're probably not going to solve this one today. But what we're going to have to what we're going to have to figure this out with. We currently have um, weighted deltas, which so errors looks like um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it looks something like this. Deltas could potentially be the same, but it might look like this. Uh, and this is gonna be an array, it's just gonna be like this. I need to create a new, um, like the the weight change, it's going to be a matrix, but it has to be the same size of matrix as the original weights. So that means 784 wide and 10 down. So I know that this needs to be 10 down, and that's based upon this. The wide is going to be interesting. So the, the outer product, the way we get that, Let me remind myself. So the outer product, we're 
going to loop through the first one down and then the second one, the second vector we go across. That feels like they, the, the example they give us was for a square matrix. Um, I wonder how am I, how am I supposed to do this? I need to look up how to do the actual uh, out, output that we really need. So an example here. Let's save this file in our test function. Outer product. So this this is just a three by three, and therefore we create a square matrix, three across, three down. I need to take something like a three by three and turn it not to three across, um, but like arbitrary number, right? 10 across. Oh wait, because I'm, I'm multiplying it by the inputs, right? That's how it, that's how it works. The width is the inputs. Okay, so the this is going to be the inputs. So vector one is the inputs, and vector two is going to be the uh, the deltas. Will, th will this work? It might work. So outer product, bring that in. Our inputs, so that's going to be our um, current training image and our deltas. So theoretically, that should uh, that should now create us a matrix the same size as the weights. We now want to have. Uh, awaits matrix subtract oh wait I want matrix multiply first scalar matrix multiply so we're going to use this to limit the size we're going to use the alpha with this to limit the size so we're going to say um, const limited uh, weighted deltas scalar matrix multiply the scalar is going to be the alpha and the matrix is going to be the weighted deltas and then uh, const new weights um, I'm doing this as new weights here because there's a chance we may want to keep the old weights um, and like compare, like just in case. Uh, so that's that's why I'm gonna keep them here. Um, and so this is gonna be the subtract. So matrix subtract. Matrix one, so we know this is going to be the weights, the current weights, and then the limited weighted deltas as next. Let's not worry about if the errors have plateaued right this second. Uh, let's not worry about if we're, you know, how, how good we are with the test images. Uh, let's not worry about should we keep going. Let's instead just. Um, 
Oh, we do need to update these here. So we're gonna say, uh, you need to be a let. Our weights is now gonna equal new weights. And down here, I want to console.log our predictions. And I want to see, are we getting closer? Uh, let's do our predictions and our current training image correct output. And let's see if we're getting closer to them. Vector one is not defined. Okay, so that's that's wonderful. Um, deep learning functions line 67. Okay, so it's because I changed some of those other things. Line 67, vector one, when I had made inputs.length and delta.length. So I want to change this. This was vector one, I believe. So your inputs. Well, we got not a number. Uh, so that's that's not. Oh, interesting. Okay, so the first time through, we had good um, our good prediction. So here's our prediction. Here's what we expected. The second time through. We got not a number as our as our output, and that was what we were supposed to get. And our third time through, not a number again. So, what happened? It's either our inputs got got screwed up, or our weights got screwed up. So I'm I'm more liable to believe that the weights got screwed up somehow. So somewhere in I don't think I have any more there you go. So here's our weighted deltas. Let's console log each of these. Not a number. Okay, excellent. That's um, that's definitely a problem. So it's right here. When we do the outer product with the current training image and the deltas, we're getting not a number from it. Which kind of kind of makes sense because everything else was was based upon that. Let's debug mode. There it is. Maybe I have reversed new weights. Um, well, I think it's this. This right here is a problem. So you're not set yet. You've got you're the, you're the image, okay? And you're the correct output. All right, let's step in. Okay, so we're gonna create our matrix. Let's just go ahead and skip to here. Our matrix is now and all these array of undefined, so that's fine. Let matrix height index equals zero, all right. This is gonna be how long we're gonna loop through. For the height 
And yes, that should be the deltas. Then the inner loop, so now we're gonna do the matrix width index is the based upon the inputs. Okay, the matrix height index, then inside the matrix width index. So this is zero, this is zero. All right, this first one has been set to zero. Okay, so let's skip through into here. Looks like, ooh, okay, so we got through the first 10 of these, and then it became not a number. That's our problem. We're making assumptions about about this matrix somehow. Uh, this this um, auto product is is incorrect. So uh, problem. Actually, I'm just going to put this into get message. So delta is 11 doesn't exist. Essentially, I think so. Um, so I'm going to have to figure out how to do that math properly for a non-square matrix creation. Uh, and I, that'll probably just going to be pen and paper for me. Um, and it's probably just like a very simple math thing. We'll have to do a new test. It'll it'll be great. Um, First 10 in each row are fine. And a n after. So I'm gonna close all these down. Send this on up. Um, problem creating the deltas, the weight, the weighted deltas. Outer product not happy with non square matrix. All right. And I'll send that on up. Here is the, uh, the code that I've been playing with today. Um, what is weird is I have never seen the outer product in machine learning, yet the book introduced it pretty early on. Then again, I haven't worked out the math in a long time. Um, well, since this is my only introduction to machine learning, I can't, um, I can't really uh, uh, dispute that or not. Um, and you have to check it out when your feeble schedules. Oh no, okay, well, I'm sorry that you're sick, um, especially because you're, you're in the... You know, you're just sort of taking time off uh, from work, uh, or you're you're on um, you're you're done with work, and you're supposed to be enjoying yourself. So I hope you're feeling better soon. And uh, with that, I've got the code for you. I've got um, I, I think that's going to be the end of the stream because I've got to go get ready for work. Um, if, uh, if you have any comments or, uh, suggestions or ways that I can, I can work either. You can, uh, sort of take a look at this code. I have links to it. Um, well, obviously here in chat, but also if you're watching the VOD on YouTube, I've got uh, a link to the code uh, down below in the description. If you're liking what you're seeing and you want to uh, get notifications, then, uh, please go ahead and, uh, follow me. Let me know that, uh, that you're, you're enjoying this. And uh, I'm also on all the places like uh, uh, Twitter and YouTube and obviously here on Twitch. And uh, I am planning on doing the next stream on Wednesday morning at 6.45 a.m. Mountain Time. 
Uh, until then, I hope that you have a great rest of your day and uh, I'll, I'll see you then. Um, King Milo, uh, greetings from Sydney. Awesome. Uh, thanks for uh, stopping by. Unfortunately, we are just uh, shutting the stream down. But um, uh, hopefully, hopefully next time. All right. With that, I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.